Spoon River, a 147 mile long offshoot of the Illinois River, draining prairie and farmland between Galesburg and Peoria, Illinois. It only has one sign marking its presence on the interstate, and it's unlikely to get a second glance from passing drivers who are just trying to get to their destination. What they don't know, however, is its value in the history of Midwestern abolitionism. Hi, I'm Rachel, and today we'll be talking about Spoon River, abolition, and the privatization of these historical landmarks. The cities and townships along the Spoon River are some of the major players in Midwestern abolition. From Toulon and Stark County to Princeton to Galesburg, these places played a crucial role in moving enslaved people to free states, and Spoon River linked them together as a mode of transportation. The Underground Railroad along Spoon River was very active in Toulon and the surrounding Stark County. The Quakers of Toulon had strong anti-slavery beliefs and were strong proponents of abolitionism. Countless people of Stark County were smuggling slaves to free states along the railroad, including abolitionist Reverend Samuel Wright. Former Knox College professor Lynn Spellman recounted a story of Wright, her childhood minister, under government watch from authorities, forcing him to signal his cohorts to take another route through Princeton, Stark County. Galesburg, the primo spot along the Spoon River for abolitionist thinkers, was nicknamed the Abolition Hall by anti-abolitionist agitators. The founder of Knox College, George Washington Gale, was a firm abolitionist, and Knox County's strong political and religious leadership caused it to be a stop along the Underground Railroad. Even though the abolitionist movement was so present along the river, not many people know about its rich history. Spellman grew up in Toulon and spoke about the lack of education on the Underground Railroad's path along Spoon River in a 2013 Lincoln Daily News article saying she was, quote unquote, at a loss for why that could be. There's no landmark that denotes Spoon River as a place of abolition. Why? Currently, I am standing on the edge of Spoon River in the Hinda, Illinois. The river is quite beautiful. It's very serene. It's very much a fall day today. The leaves have started turning yellow. So Spoon River was a mode of transportation along the Underground Railroad. It makes sense like it's very kind of shrouded in trees, especially on this side. But it's like really deep set in the land too. There's like a line of metal stakes in the ground with these little yellow flags that says warning gas pipeline. Yeah, it's really actually quite beautiful. It's really peaceful. And I assume Dehinda's population is very small because no one's come out here to yell at me. There's no sign that acknowledges this part of the Spoon River as a mode of transportation along the Underground Railroad. Something I've been wondering about in relation to this project is infrastructure in general and industrialization and the movement to cities and suburbs. And I think like small communities like this, I wonder about how much a government standpoint, local government to state to federal, probably not that much is going to preserving the land or preserving the history. I think this is the only place where I can access the river and it's like potentially public property. I'm not quite sure. The majority of the land along either side is private. The private property is interesting though, as in what makes one historical landmark more important than another? Is this because the Underground Railroad is not seen as part of the hegemonic, quote-unquote, white United States history? Why is this place as a mode of transportation to freedom less important than Midwestern suburbia? I wonder if the city or county lacks the financial resources to put up some historical markings or acknowledgements. While abolition is often something thought of as a past movement, there are remnants of anti-slavery activism today in the protests against police brutality of black people, in workers' strikes, and in women's reproductive rights. Unfortunately, the increasing privatization of land and globalization to the extent of economic imperialism and the colonial capitalist labor logics make change difficult, especially because it goes directly against those colonial capitalist economic interests. However, these small, incremental movements on the part of the people can, eventually, make change in policy despite how disheartening and tragic it is in these moments of loss and grief. 
The gas pipeline is an example of how infrastructure directly impacts this body of water as it destroys not only our environment with crude oil and natural gas, but also our history. Just past the car bridge, remnants of a tractor tire lay halfway in the riverbank, and a long since abandoned upside down car lay covered in foliage. While these objects are seemingly abandoned, they have now inserted themselves into the history of Spoon River. And yet, the knowledge of abolition along the river remains inaccessible as ever, with no museum or tours, no dedicated trails, and the private property that obstructs the memory of this section of the Underground Railroad. All this knowledge and oral history is preserved in remote locations across the Midwest, such as the Seymour Library in Galesburg, and through word of mouth rather than history classes. But I leave this question again with you, the audience. What makes one historical landmark more important than another? Research conducted by Jude and Rachel. Lynn Spellman discusses the Underground Railroad in Stark County was produced in 2013 by the Lincoln Daily News. Galesburg, Hotbed of Abolitionism, was by Herman Mulder, produced by the Journal of the Illinois State Historical Society in 1942. Narration is by Rachel. This project is produced by Eric Lemon in conjunction with the Knox College Abolition Lab and is edited and mixed by Jude and Rachel.